Exodus chapter 24 and the verse number 1 onwards. It says, <clears throat> Now he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. Okay. So, God is giving instruction and saying, come up to the Lord. You and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 elders of Israel. Hallelujah. Now, this is uh, if you see uh, a parallel, if you connect, there were 70 who were sent out by Jesus. There were first the 12 who were sent out. Then God, Jesus chose another 70. Hallelujah. Now here, God is asking Moses to come up and then say, who is with you? The priestly people who are with you. And uh, so Moses is there. And then there is Aaron, there is Nadab and Habihu, and 70 elders of Israel join. Hallelujah. And they worship from afar. So there is the people of God, and then there is a select set of people who go up and draw near to God. Hallelujah. And in verse number 2 it says, And Moses alone shall come near God, near the Lord. But they shall not all come near nor shall the people go up with him. So, there is three stages being shown. Moses was to draw extremely close uh, into God's glory. And uh, then there was another set of people, okay, who were uh, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel, who were exceptionally uh, different from the people of Israel. They were given the privilege of coming up and drawing near to God. Look at verse 3. It says, So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. Now, God is breaking a covenant with the nation of Israel. And Moses is the messenger of the covenant. And he is carrying the law. And he is saying, I am teaching you the words of the Lord. Okay. And, you know, he's, he's, so Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. So everything what God told Moses, Moses is telling the people. And the people are replying and saying, all what you have said, all what the Lord has said, we will do. We agree. And we bind ourselves, we take a vow that whatever the Lord has said, we will follow. Pakka, pakka. Okay, now, let's look at verse number 7 of the same chapter. It says, Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said we will do, and be obedient. So the people were very clear. They were again vouching and saying, All that the Lord said we will do and be obedient. <clears throat> and in verse number 8 it says, And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. Hallelujah. So this is the blood of the covenant. So every covenant is cut with a sprinkling of the blood. The old covenant was ratified with the sprinkling of the blood upon the people of God. Okay, so Moses took the blood uh, and sprinkled it upon the people and declared that this is the blood of the covenant mm, which the Lord has made according to all these words. Now, we see those were the blood of bulls and goats. And that covenant was ratified with blood, blood of animals. Now here, we will come back to that. 
in verse number 9 of the same chapter it says then moses went up also aaron neda and abihu and 70 of the elders of israel and they saw the god of israel mm -hmm. pay very close attention to this all of them went and it says they saw the god of israel are you hearing me when the blood is being sprinkled upon the people now there is the covenant that has been cut now they can draw near and now god reveals to them who he is and they these privileged people moses aaron nadab abihu and the 70 elders they saw the god of israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone and it was like the very heavens in its clarity mm. this is the shamaim the heavens and the shamaim is being shown as the pavement under the feet of god and they are able to see god and they are actually seeing his feet because you know they were seeing under his feet as it were the paved work of sapphire stone hallelujah now we have a better covenant ratified with a better blood hallelujah than the blood of bulls and goats hallelujah look at this hebrews chapter 9 verse 18 it says therefore not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood without blood there is no dedication of a covenant so the book of hebrews is very clearly saying that the last covenant was dedicated with blood now Hebrews 10 and verse 1 it says for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect now hear this very carefully those people who drew near and actually had a vision of who god is they had a nebulic they were shown they were given grace they were given the ability to peep into who god is and they saw the the pavement they saw under the feet of god it was like the transparent heavens the shamaim laid under the feet of god hallelujah and yet all those who saw scripture says all of them died in the wilderness all of these elders except for joshua except for caleb and who are not even mentioned in this list mm are you hearing me this morning look at this so all of them including moses couldn't cross over to the promised land Moses was not judged but he was kept he is with God in heaven hallelujah he is the prophet of the old covenant but now the elders never could enter into the promises of God because they disobeyed and their their bodies are lying their carcasses are lying in the wilderness as a witness says scripture but now it says for the law which was a shadow of the good things to come so the law the old covenant was a shadow and what we have today is the substance which is Christ Jesus so the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices what were the sacrifices the sacrifice of bulls and goats which they offer continually year after year they could not make those people perfect those who approach near through that law through that covenant they could not be made perfect 
Now, in Hebrews 7 and verse 11, let's look at Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 11. It says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, that is the old covenant, for under that old covenant, under it, the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron. Hallelujah. So, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, there was no more any need for a new covenant. The old would have been enough. But the scripture is saying very clearly that the old covenant could not perfect anybody. Now, in the same chapter, verse number 18, let's look at verse 18. It says, For on the one hand, there is an annulling, which means of the former commandment, because of its weakness and unprofitableness. On the one hand, there is annulling, which means of the former commandment, because of its weakness and, and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. Hallelujah. Now, the old covenant, nothing could be made perfect. That law, there is an annulling of the former commandment because it is weak and it is unprofitable. Now, we have a covenant which is strong which is profitable and which can make a person who comes into that covenant perfect. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Now I want to picture that with an example, okay, which is the terminology of the Sabbath, okay, or Shabbat, okay, as the people call it. Now, we know that the Shabbat was a command given to the nation of Israel, which is the seventh day. Now, we know from the book of Genesis, from the beginning, when God created the universe, he created man, and then God worked for six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Now, look at this. Let us understand the Sabbath through the New Testament. Understanding. Let's get a deeper understanding of what the Sabbath is in the New Covenant. Okay, let's look at Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 16 and 17. Colossians 2, verse 16, 17. Take notes if you can. Okay, very important. Colossians 2, verse 16, 17. It says, So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths. So all of these parts, the Sabbaths, the new moons, the festivals, all of these were given in the Old Covenant. Verse 17 says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Hallelujah. So, these were just a mere shadow. <coughs> what we today have is the substance. And who is the substance? The substance is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. There is no other name given under heaven by by which man can be saved. Amen. There is no name under heaven. No sun, moon or stars. No zodiac signs can determine what, uh, what is your future. Hallelujah. Do not be deceived. Uh, do not be led by any kinds of false notions. But be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no salvation other than in Christ Jesus. Alright. Now, look at this. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Jesus is declaring. He says, Matthew 5. He says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. You shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. So, what is Jesus saying? You shall be perfect. The reason is, the old covenant could not make anybody perfect. So what Jesus is coming and declaring, look here, now I'm coming to you 
because Moses brought the law, but I have come. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the new covenant has come. And this new covenant is able to cause you to become perfect. Hallelujah. Look at this. So you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Come on. I want you to lift up your hands and say, I shall be perfect as my father in heaven is perfect. I shall be perfect. Hallelujah. Come on, declare that over your life, over your family. I shall be perfect as the heavenly father is perfect. So shall I be. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at this. Exodus 20 and verse number 9 and 10. Exodus 20, verse number 9 and 10. This is uh, the Ten Commandments. We will look at a, uh, an aspect of that. It says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. This is the commandment of God. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Which work? All your work. Pay attention to this very carefully. Six days you shall labor. Who shall labor? You shall labor. And what work shall you do? Your work you shall do. Mm. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Mm. Look at this. In it you shall do no work. What were you doing six days? You were doing your work. And on the seventh day, you shall do no work. But look at this. In the seventh day, there were one set of people who were doing a whole lot of work. Immense. That, that was the busiest day for them. And they were the priests, the Levites, who were serving in the house of God. They had a complete busy schedule on a Shabbat day. They were working. Mm. But the people were told, you shall do no work. But the priests were to work. So what is this talking about? In the Shabbat, you are not to do your work, but you are called to do his work. Hallelujah. When you enter into his work, <laughs> you are entering into his rest. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Every work you do on the seventh day should be God's work. It should not be your work. Six days God says he has given you to work. Seven days shall be God's work. Hallelujah. Now, look at the book of Hebrews. This is uh, Hebrews quoting what Jesus is saying. It says, therefore, when he came, who came? Jesus came. This is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5, 6 and 7. Look at this. In verse number 5 it says, Therefore when he came, therefore when Jesus came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But a body you have prepared for me. Jesus is saying, Father, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But a body... A body you have prepared for me. Wow. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Mm. The sacrifices and offerings for sin were the type and shadow in the Old Testament. That was being showcased. That was the main things that were there in the Old Covenant. In verse number 7 it says, Then I said, Behold, I have come Jesus is saying, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. So Jesus is saying, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. So Jesus came into this world not to do his work, not to do his will, but to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Stay with me here. Open with me. Open the Bible. To Colossians. Chapter 3 verse number 17. Colossians 3 17. Look at this. And it says whatever you do. 
in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him mm. whatever you do in in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him so everything that you do offer it to god you are doing on behalf of him do all in the name of jesus so whether you are doing your business whether you are doing your uh, you are uh, at your job whether you are cutting vegetables uh, in your kitchen whether uh, you are uh, you know singing a song whether you are dancing whether you are rejoicing whether you are studying in your school or in your college or uh, whatever higher learning that you are doing all do all for the glory of god and you do it in the name of the lord jesus christ giving thanks to god the father through him hallelujah now understand this i'm i'm tying certain things so that we get a deeper revelation of what jesus is trying to say look at this you will be doing the will of god seven days a week if you do this you know in according to colossians if you do all this you are doing the will of the father all the seven days of the week so that means you are doing the will of god every day so now in the new covenant there is no separation between your work and god's work it is all his work you have died to self and now the life you live you live the life of christ in you mm. it is not your life because you've been buried under the waters of baptism you have died you have been crucified with christ jesus you are no more alive mm. now the life that you live you live the life of christ hallelujah so everything that you do is for the glory of god so now look at this there is no separation between secular work and godly work every work is godly work hallelujah as you surrender your life to god your life is now in the hands of god and everything that you do is holy unto the lord mm you talking to your secular friends is also holy unto the lord are you hearing me this this morning okay seven days a week we do the work of god and it is all holy when we are mindful of doing it all for the glory of jesus christ when we do it all in the name of jesus everything is according to his will we move in his will and we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh we walk in the spirit and we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh hallelujah so we are living in the shabbat of god all the days of our life are you hearing me this morning jesus came to fulfill the law that's why on the seventh day you will find jesus moving around and healing people on the sabbath day and he was poking it at the the law keeping the pharisees and they couldn't understand the heart of god and he was saying jesus was coming and saying what about the levitical priesthood when they serve in the temple are they not breaking the covenant are they not coming against the law of god by working on the sabbath day no according to the law the levites who were working in the temple were doing god's will by working but the rest of the people who were not working in the house of god they had to cease from all their work hallelujah now in the new covenant everything is in the shabbat of god we who are in christ jesus we move in the sabbath of god the rest of god hallelujah we do his will everything is holy are you hearing me hallelujah now god is breaking the very root of sin nature within us by the grace of god in the new covenant that is why he says be a perfect as your heavenly father is perfect and we are enabled to be perfect in this new covenant this covenant has the ability to make you perfect just as the heavenly father is perfect come on give god praise hallelujah hallelujah look at this 
Colossians 3 and verse 22. It says, Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. So now, see, Paul is writing to the church in Colossae and, and he's saying that everything that you do, you are a slave working under a, uh, under a master. Everything that you do unto the master and, and you are doing, you may think this is secular work, but you are to do with sincerity as though you are now serving under the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are to serve the living God with your work. Hallelujah. You are not reporting to your earthly master. You are reporting to your heavenly master, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. But now, you know, bond servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers. No, do not be men pleasers. But in sincerity of heart, even in the secret place of your heart. Make sure that you're sincere. Fearing God. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. So when you serve, when you teach, when you disciple, when you, uh, when you do your business, when you uh, are employed and, and you function in your company, when you are in your college studying, when you're in your school studying, all that you do, when in your kitchen, when you're cooking, in all aspects, when you're raising up your children, when you're talking to your children, when you're talking to your neighbor, when you're you know, uh, talking to your secular friends, everything that you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ and no one else. In the new covenant, your boss is one. Your audience is one. And that audience is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 10. Quickly, let's move ahead. I have to cover a lot. It says, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10, it says, For he who has entered his rest, has himself also ceased from his works. Are you hearing me? Hebrews 4 verse 10. God's rest is the Sabbath rest. For he who has entered God's rest, that is the Sabbath, has himself also ceased from his works. So, from today, hear the word of the Lord. All your works are seized. It is no longer your work. Are you hearing me? If you continue to do your work, which is according to your will, you are no longer in the rest of God. You are outside the Sabbath. But today God is saying, submit and surrender, yield and let, would you take the example of Jesus Christ and walk on this earth and do the will of the Father. Not your own will, but his will. Hallelujah. So that you are seized from your work. Now whatever you do is according to his will. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6 and verse 7, it says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Leave the elementary things. Are you ready for growth in Christ Jesus? Are you ready for strong needs? Leave the discussion of elementary principles of Christ Jesus. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Aha. Uh -huh. Dead works. Where does dead works come from? What are these dead works? These dead works are those works which you do according to your will, for your own desire and your own pleasure. So when you have ceased from your works, 
you entered into the rest of god and you have left the elementary principles and come on into perfection in christ jesus hallelujah are you hearing me church this morning okay look at this matthew 16 and verse 24 it says then jesus said to his disciples if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me mm if anyone desires to come after me are you ready to follow christ as the example you ought to copy him let him deny himself so the work is your work is to deny yourself to take up his cross and follow me says jesus take up your cross what is your cross is to crucify your flesh your desires your plans your your purposes uh, and everything that is got to do with your empire building your empire building your dreams building your things let it be brought to a knot pick up your cross and follow him whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it what is he saying whoever desires to have this life not just physical life but your emotional life your ambitious life your desire life all of those lives are you willing to lose it because if you are willing to lose your you know your stuff your desires then you are ready to take upon his desires as your desires and then you are entering into his rest hallelujah and then you are becoming like him hallelujah you are becoming truly his disciples hallelujah and so you will have life and life in all abundance okay look at hebrews 4 and verse 15 it says for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses see he does not leave you stranded in the middle of the road uh, he doesn't say i'm finished with you you tried and you tried and you fell down okay god says you know i'm not finished with you he is not going to leave you he who has begun a good work in you will accomplish it and fulfill it hallelujah he grieves he gives grace he gives grace are you hearing me hallelujah where you need grace his grace is sufficient for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin are you hearing me he was tested in every point if you take your car to your service center he will say uh, you know there is a 200 point check which is free for you sir you know the the technician will come uh, and he will say you know these are the the service offerings we give you 200 point check up all of all of your details on this car you know so likewise all points whatever points you are suffering and whatever points you have been tempted in jesus has been tempted in all points as we are yet he has been found without sin hallelujah now i want to say this Let's look at this. Hebrews chapter five and verse five. Hebrews chapter five and verse five. It says, "So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was He who said to him, 'You are my son. Today I have begotten you.' As He also says in another place, 'You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek.' Now this is Jesus." who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries underline this in your bible jesus cried with vehement cries and tears to the father are you hearing me you are not the one who is exceptional who is the only one who has been crying and shedding tears on this earth even jesus christ the son of the living god came here and he cried with vehement cries and tears 
to him the father who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered pay attention to this verse very carefully yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered can you believe that jesus suffered on this earth 33 and a half years he lived and he from the time he was in his mother's womb and when he came out he has been living a life pleasing to the father he has come to do the will of the father not his own will so every time he had to die to himself and to live according to the will of the father and he learned obedience to the father by the things which he suffered are you hearing me there was this fight and he suffered it says and he learned obedience and in verse number 9 it says and having been perfected he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him wow having been perfected see he was also put through temptations but yet he came out every one of those temptations every one every one of those places where he was put to the test he put his father above himself he said not my will lord but yours be done not my will bo lord but yours be done hallelujah and he learned obedience and he was perfected are you hearing me the son of the living god was perfected and he became then he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him hear me very carefully he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him do not be mistaken saints you cannot just say a sinner's prayer and just forget about it you are to obey the living god hallelujah now he is called by god as high priest according to the order of melchizedek mm -hmm. now he suffered on this earth and he chose to follow the will of the father not his own will and he fought the fight the good fight of faith and he triumphed in all points he was tested but he was without sin hallelujah look at this what paul says 1 corinthians 123 it says but we preach christ crucified to the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness we preach not christ resurrected we preach christ crucified why is he doing that why is paul preaching christ crucified because the gospel of the kingdom the new covenant brings liberty because that liberty is brought on as you identify yourself to be crucified with christ jesus that is the gospel that is the new testament that you are to be crucified with christ jesus on that cross hallelujah so you are now set free he whom the son sets free is free indeed now you live a new life the life of christ jesus hallelujah living to god the father accomplishing his will and not your will hallelujah second timothy verse chapter 2 and verse 11 it says this is a faithful saying if we died with him we shall also live with him mm. if we died with him we shall also live with him galatians 6 and verse 14 it says but god forbid that i should boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and i to the world hallelujah look at this at the time when jesus was crucified there were two people along with jesus there were three crucified jesus in the middle and there were two believers ha ah, sorry two people two thieves on the cross now i want to show you three types of people on this world three types three were on the cross one was a thief who was hard hearted was unbelieving what christ did and he was unrepentant he had his own will he was self righteous he 
was hard hearted and he went down into hell that was the bad thief and there was another thief uh, who repented on the last hour he was a thief who did his own will who sinned all his life lived his own life and then when he died before he died he repented and he accepted the forgiveness that came through jesus christ hallelujah that is another set of one set of believer those are believers who who are wanting to live their own lifestyle but rely upon jesus to cleanse them from all sin and that they are taken to heaven but hear this they are saved by the skin of their teeth they are saved like lot they suffer loss they are in the kingdom of god they are in heaven just like the thief jesus said now you shall be with me in paradise but now paul says you know you are called to build upon the foundation of christ jesus are you going to build wood hay and stubble or are you going to build gold silver and precious stones according to what is mentioned uh, the judgment seat in the bema judgments are you getting me now i'm not going into the bema seat judgment but we are called to build our lives upon the strong foundation of jesus christ hallelujah jesus has saved you not by your works it is by his grace it is all his works his finished work on the cross but now you ought to build upon his work that foundation salvation is accomplished for you and me but now how do you build ahead so that you receive crowns rewards in heaven that you have something to look forward to hallelujah first peter chapter 2 and verse number 21 first peter chapter 2 and verse number 21 it says for to us you were called for for this you were called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his footsteps his steps you were called to this thing for christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow that footsteps who committed no sin nor was deceit found in his mouth who when he was reviled did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously hallelujah are you the one who walks like christ when you are reviled when you are persecuted when you are hated do you bless those who persecute you do you bless those who curse you do you bless uh, you know cur- uh, bless those who revile you but or are you the one who will give back nicely verse number 24 it says who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed hallelujah he jesus bore our sins on his body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness hallelujah we have this treasure hallelujah carrying in our hearts in this earthen vessel we have the heavenly treasure the treasure of christ jesus he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world we live now today we live for christ and no one else hallelujah so surrender your will to the holy spirit because his plans for you are good do not think that god's plans for you are bad know this let no let there be no heart of bitterness or root of bitterness formed in your heart take away every root of fear root of bitterness let it be cleansed by the blood of the lamb let it be broken in the name of jesus and may you be filled with the power of god may you be filled with the overflowing nature of who christ jesus is hallelujah may the new covenant bring you strength and relishing and refreshing hallelujah from the throne of grace hallelujah for he has died on the cross for you identify him yourself with him and live a life yielded to his spirit hallelujah 
in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 it says that we are now ambassadors for christ we are ambassadors you and me are ambassadors of this new covenant we represent christ jesus we are just as jesus was the express image of the father we are the image of christ jesus on this earth we represent christ we are the ambassadors of him wherever we go christ is visible to everyone around because we do the will of the father hallelujah as though god were pleading through us we implore you on christ's behalf whatever we do whatever we talk whatever action we do we are imploring people on christ's behalf hallelujah we do not represent ourselves but we represent jesus christ hallelujah and we tell the people be reconciled to god for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him hallelujah so today tell yourself you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus hallelujah you and me are the righteousness of god in christ jesus hallelujah call to walk in the newness of life call to walk according to the nature of who jesus is hallelujah for the lord is your strong tower the lord is your refuge and your fortress the lord is the author and finisher of your faith and he is going to cause you to walk in abundance and overflow hallelujah only you need to be yielded to him surrender your will now offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice this is your reasonable service in the kingdom of god this is your reasonable service come on Hallelujah offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord yield your will to his will and his will is always better his hand is always better hallelujah his hand to your mouth is always better than your hand to your mouth amen his hands are bigger he is your good shepherd he will lead you beside still waters he will cause you to abound in every good thing in the name of jesus hallelujah he will cause you to not lack in any good thing surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever Amen. for the goodness of god causes you to be established in the house of god hallelujah so today you are called to be ambassadors of jesus christ hallelujah now thanks be to god who leads you always in triumph in Christ Jesus hallelujah he leads you in triumph his ways are better than your ways come on right now just bow before the lord come close your eyes bow before the lord and come before his presence and say lord i'm willing to surrender my life to you i'm willing to be identified with you on the cross that my whole nature is crucified on that cross my plans are crucified my will is crucified now what i live i live unto christ jesus now i live to fulfill the will of the father hallelujah i thank you lord you called me to perfection you called me to triumph you call me to abundance you call me to walk in grace and the goodness of god all the days of my life hallelujah thank you lord for open heavens hallelujah and the power of god that surrounds each one of us we thank you we bless you hallelujah in the mighty of name of jesus now may the lord bless you come on receive this now may the lord bless you and may your family be blessed as you decide to walk in his will may the lord cause his favor to rest upon you may you walk in triumph all the days of your life may you be built up in him in the holy and precious name of jesus hallelujah and may the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all the days of your life in jesus name and everybody said Amen.